Hi, welcome to Credit Matters TV. My name is Yifan Pua from Standard & Poor's Sovereign and Public Finance Ratings. Today we are here to discuss the 2012 Asia-Pacific Sovereign Credit Outlook. I'm joined today by Lena Okorochenko, Managing Director and Lead Analytical Manager for Standard & Poor's Sovereign and Public Finance Ratings Asia-Pacific. Elena is based in our Singapore office. Welcome, Elena. Thank you, Fine. Now, Elena, the economic and financial environment has certainly been challenging in recent years. How do you think have Asia-Pacific so sovereigns fared so far? Well, so far, um, countries and sovereigns in Asia-Pacific fared pretty well. In fact, much better than many other regions globally. We've had uh, mostly stable outlook, outlooks throughout um, uh, the whole crisis episode in the past uh, two, three years, and we even had a couple, a couple of upgrades and certainly fewer downgrades than uh, Europe, for example. And even at the moment when, the, as you mentioned, the environment continues to be challenging and even deteriorates, the majority of sovereign um, ratings in Asia Pacific remain on stable outlooks. Right. The global landscape remains difficult, as you pointed out. Are Asia-Pacific sovereigns then immune to global problems? What are the key risks that you see for them now and also in 2012? Certainly not immune. Um, we at uh, Stand and Poor's are not believers in the so-called decoupling of uh, Asia or Asia-Pacific from, uh, from the rest of the world. And by far the uh, most important risk or the biggest challenge, I would say, is the, what's happening in the Eurozone. The Eurozone troubles can affect Asia-Pacific sovereigns through a multitude of channels, but most importantly by affecting their growth and affecting their funding availability or access to funding. Right. Which sovereigns do you think are particularly more affected by the crisis unfolding right now in the Eurozone? Uh, if you, as I mentioned, could be affected uh, through growth and um, demand for their experts. So for example, um, when you combine um, sovereigns that rely on experts for their growth with a high share of experts to the Eurozone, then of course these uh, sovereigns become vulnerable. You could name a few. Um, I would uh, highlight uh, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other channel, as I mentioned, is through uh, access to funding and availability of funding. Sovereigns, um, uh, sovereign governments and corporates and uh, banking sectors relying on external funding uh, could, um, could be vulnerable as well. And here I would mention, um, as far as the corporate and government funding is concerned, uh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, also Vietnam to some degree, and Indonesia. And if you look at the banking sector exposure to external, uh, global external ma ma markets and especially wholesale markets, then uh, um, perhaps South Korea, New Zealand and Australia are worth a mention. Right. That's very interesting. What do you think can these sovereigns do then to lessen the negative impacts from, you know, on their financial systems and also on their economies? There is the usual arsenal of tools at their disposal, the fiscal stimulus, the monetary stimulus. Unfortunately, they are facing this um, uh, new challenge and the deteriorating global environment in a position where they are dealing with some domestic pressures such as, for example, um, uh, domestic inflation and asset bubbles. Domestic inflation remains sticky despite slowing growth and this is because the structural issues that are now driving it, changes in demand and uh, in consumption patterns and also logistical and distributional bottlenecks. We also know that there is a fear of uh, frosty property markets or even property bubbles um, and of course the volatility of capital flow. In this um, uh, environment, it is uh, quite difficult to balance how to implement certain tools and policy mistakes are possible. Um, they could result in um, hard lending mm -hmm. in some countries. They could result in trade tensions, um, protectionist measures, um, uh, capital controls um, and such. And um, uh, that would be quite damaging and hurting to medium term economic prospects. Right. So do you see this as a case of deja vu back from 2008? You know, will Asia-Pacific uh, economies be able to enact massive stimulus and then, you know, their economies could recover quickly as a result? Yes and no. Yes, because if the um, global environment con continues to deteriorate, they will have to enact uh, massive stimulus. Probably they will recourse again to fiscal stimulus. And no, because the balance sheets of many sovereigns are not as strong as they were mm -hmm. prior to the 2008 crisis. 
uh, in fact, many sovereigns and many governments increased their, uh, their burdens quite significantly compared to where they were in 2007. Uh, some of it has to do with the fiscal stimulus to support the economies in 2008-2009. Some of it has to do with natural disasters and the recovery efforts that they've implemented. Um, I could mention a few there, uh, Malaysia, uh, Japan, New Zealand, um, all increased, and Vietnam, all increased their debt burden significantly. And there are some other sovereigns like India, already highly indebted at their uh, rating levels. So what I'm trying to say is that yes, they will have to implement some kind of uh, fiscal stimulus to support the economic growth, but they will be doing, some of them will be doing it from much weaker uh, balance sheet perspective, and um, they may not be able to do it without damaging potentially their credit ratings. So where do you see China? Do you see it as you know being able to come to the world's rescue, or even you know be able to come to the region's rescue? So uh, a, a good question. Uh, I think as the global growth slows down, you see more and more eyes uh, turn to China with the hope that China will uh, uh, save the global economy and help it to grow. Well, on the one hand, we believe that China will be able to implement um, necessary policy and engineer soft lending. Mm -hmm. We believe that its uh, banking sector will not collapse under the weight of bad loans from the property sector and the local government sector. But at the same time, we don't think the economy is strong enough to support the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. While the government's balance sheet can afford uh, further fiscal stimulus to support its own economy and the prominence of uh, China is growing um, in the region as a whole, uh, the rest of the region is still quite dependent on Europe and the U.S. For example, many um, countries in Asia uh, export between 10 to 20 percent uh, of their total exports still to Europe and the U.S. And so, of course, the dependence on these two um, remains significant. Right. So on that note, do you think that the overall picture for Asia-Pacific sovereign has turned negative so far? The out, we haven't changed many outlooks to negative just yet. And the reason is that the, we don't see the um, extreme scenario um, of the Eurozone breakup or a prolonged um, recession in Europe as our base case, even though we've lowered our economic forecast on quite a few um, countries already. But if, of course, if the extreme uh, scenario were to materialize, then many ratings uh, might come under pressure. Again, Asia-Pacific is in a better place to weather this risk, weather this crisis than um, many other regions in the globe. But um, as I mentioned, the balance sheets are weaker. So pressure on the ratings is possible should the downside scenario materialize. So my last question to you for today is, so what do you see as the long-term picture for Asia-Pacific solvent? The long-term picture, once we are past these uh, short-term challenges and short-term uh, issues, um, looks, uh, I think, quite interesting. It depends on uh, how emerging markets progress with their reforms, um, especially reforms in deepening their domestic capital markets, um, liberalizing their financial systems in reforming their labor and um, land markets, on the one hand. And on the other hand, how they um, tackle the challenges and later if they need to deleverage, how they deleverage, how they address the aging population problem and how they rebalance their growth more to domestic drivers from currently being export oriented. So um, for emerging markets in Asia, this will um, uh, determine how quickly their ratings move up or uh, whether they remain stable or maybe some of them may come even under pressure. For developed sovereigns, th their response to the uh, current challenges and the ability to manage their fiscal position uh, will be uh, detrimental to, um, uh, to their future. I think uh, long-term growth potential and also um, aging issues will, uh, will ca come to play a role. So I think uh, that's, uh, that's where we see um, the key drivers in the long term. Thanks, Elena. That's all for Credit Matters TV today.